Benim. a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all all over morning place else yeah we are we are hey open your Bibles up to the book of Hebrews chapter number four Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, it's in the name of Jesus Christ I make this request. And I just pray, Lord, tonight that each and every one of us, as we go along a study of your holy word and your scriptures tonight, that we see 
uh, this is a celebration for us, a celebration now while we're in life and while we're breathing on this earth. And Father God, you have a lot left for us to do. And uh, we, just, we just thank you. Maybe we see how much more you have left for us to do. And we just praise you in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You know, we, we are, I, this is a little bit of a continuation of what I was doing last week, and I'm not going to go and recap all that because you probably don't remember it anyhow. But uh, <laughs> we have a hard time remembering what we did yesterday, right? So, but, uh, you know, for those of us who truly have Christ in us and we're in Christ, we have so, we can celebrate big time, big time celebration. Think about it. Um, come the rapture, I've said this to you so many times, but there's going to be so many people who die in the rapture. I believe that there'll be more people that go to hell at the rapture than there will be going to heaven. Because that's going to cause a lot of chaos, a lot of carnage, a lot of death, a lot of tragedy. And <clears throat> it's going to put, if, if, if the Democratic Party thinks they're in derision tonight, wait till that takes place. And we know that's what it's going to take to get all those nations to come together. We know that's what it's going to take for them to go, this can never happen again. We can't be caught back on our heels and not knowing. So everybody's going to have to take a number and a mark. And that number is what? 666. The number of the beast. <clears throat> to buy, to sell, to do all those things. The tribulation hour. Oh, the first three and a half is going to be just, you know, nice. So nice, and then the Antichrist and the false prophet are just going to, the Antichrist is just going to take a great turn. He's going to lure everybody in, and then he's going to sit in that temple in Jerusalem as though he were God. Now, we're not going to be here, are we? But we are coming back here. Amen? And, and at the end of that terrible seven years of tribulation, but... Until now, here's, what, here's why we're so blessed. We get to take this out the door with us tonight. Why? Because we're here to hear it, right? We're here to share this with each other. Those folks who say that they're Christians and aren't here to share this with us tonight, they don't, they don't, they're not, they don't have a reason to celebrate. Um, and, and you know what? When the rapture takes place, when the rapture takes place, they're suddenly going to be saying, huh? Oh, how come he gets one of those and I don't? <laughs> this makes sense. <laughs> um, they're, they're called rewards, right? We were talking about that last week. Well, how come? It'd be like a bunch of little kids. We're all, you know, those of us who are saved, we're all children of God, right? Those of us who are saved. And so it's going to be like a bunch of little kids. How come he gets one of those or she gets one of those and I don't? Well, because you didn't earn it. <laughs> it's pretty much that simple, right? It's kind of like, why'd you get a paycheck? <laughs> Because you worked for it. And why didn't he get a paycheck? Because he didn't earn one. And so we're looking at verse number 13 here. I'm going to have you all over the place in celebration of this tonight. Neither is, any, is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Isn't it funny that uh, so many folks that say they're Christians can run around like God doesn't see them and live their lives like God doesn't see them 24-7 every minute. He doesn't know their, their uprising, their downsitting. He doesn't, he doesn't know the thoughts and the intents of their heart. He doesn't know any of those things. He knows it all, amen? amen. He knows it about us too. And, but the nice thing about us here tonight, we're here together to be able to reproof ourselves through the word of God. We're here to fix things, right? and to get washed by the water of the word. They're not. So they just continue to spiral into those non-conforming ways, uh, uh, not being in, in the, in the uh, uh, blessings of the Lord. So what, why do we celebrate tonight? We celebrate because there's this rapture, the rapture's coming on us quick, quick. And I believe, and you know what, even if it's not quick, there's still such a reason to celebrate because when we draw our last breath, guess what we're not going to be doing? Ah! <laughs> we're not going to be screaming in the torments of hell. Amen? That's something to celebrate over. 
for, for certain it's something to celebrate over. And so uh, go with me over to the, to the book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah. I'm going to take you to chapter number two. So what's going to happen, you Bible scholars that I think I've taught diligently, what's going to happen at the end of the seven-year tribulation hour? We're coming back with the Lord, amen? amen. And, and the, Lord, the Lord is going to be here on the earth with us. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to be right here on the earth with us. So Isaiah, when you look at Isaiah chapter 2, Check this out. Uh, verse number two. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. All nations. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Where is that taking place at? Right here on the earth. Amen? Right here on the earth. We are looking at, after the tribulation hour is over with, what, what do we call that? The 1,000... Yeah, the millennial reign, the one that we come back to Christ on this earth, for, and there's a 1,000 year millennial reign. And, and, and think about this, there's, there's, we've just, just coming out of that tribulation hour, we get to come back, he, he took us out of that so that we didn't have to endure all that. That's something, that's something to celebrate tonight, right? We don't have to go through that. Uh, uh, the other thing to celebrate is we get to come back and the conditions of which we come back into are, are something that we've never tasted right here on the earth. And it's going to be such a celebration. And, you know, who's going to be with us? Well, remember, he seals the 144,000 in their foreheads that they can't be what? Killed. And they go through all type of bad stuff, don't they? They're here during the whole tribulation hour. They're in when the sun is scorching everything and, er and when everything, it's so hot and, and they can't get food, and they can't get water, and they can't get drink, but somebody's giving it to them, right? Huh? Remember, remember, the, the, Lord, remember the, the Lord? Uh, when, did you, when did I give you to drink? When did I give you to eat? He said, inasmuch as you did it to my brethren, you've done it unto me. So there's going to be people, they're going to be helping that 144,000 during the tribulation hour. They're going to be people that are hiding and, and they're suffering too, right? They're suffering just as much as they are, but they're trying to help the 144,000. And, and they're, and I'm way off, I'm not even on my outline now. <clears throat> and, and, and they're going through trials and discomfort during, during the tribulation hour. And why are they doing that? Why are they stuck here in the tribulation hour? I'm sorry? Yeah, they were, they, they're going to get saved during the tribulation hour. They, were, they didn't know, they didn't have that message before, so therefore they didn't go in the rapture. They didn't have the message, okay? They got the message afterwards. So we're talking about some young people, some young people that, had not, that, that didn't deny but just didn't get the message. And they're going to be living through that tribulation hour. And now if they get caught and they have to take the number of the beast or make a choice not to, now they're going to get the head chopped off for the cause of Christ. So now they've got they gotta, they got to try not to get caught. they got to try not to buy something in the store. Then, and they better make sure they're not selling something. So they're just all over the place. And they're also trying to help the 144,000. That's a rough time, isn't it? That's a rough, rough time. 
And so you see, there are going to be people, 144,000 plus, that are actually going to come out the other side of that tribulation hour into the millennial kingdom. And they're going to be a lot, and, and at the end of that tribulation hour, they're going to be greatly worse for wear. But the Dave's talking about his hip and stuff, child's play. These people are going to be scorched from the sun. These people are going to be probably rickets and, and scurvy and you name it. You name it because it's been tough, downright tough. And then here we come. We're going to be as Christ. We're going to have what kind of bodies? Glorified bodies. We're going to have those new bodies. And we're not going to be invisible. We're going to be like Christ. Isn't it cool? Christ got to sit down. He ate. Huh? And the doors were closed and locked and he showed up. <laughs> um, and, and we're going to be as Christ. That, I mean, that's something to celebrate. And we're going to know each other. We'll all know each other. We'll all know each other. And when we get into that millennial kingdom, that thousand year reign, and those 144,000 are there, and they're pretty worse for wear when, we, when everybody gets there. Um, but when Christ gets there, it's an interesting thing. We'll look at that here in just a couple of minutes. But the celebration that we, that we have just tonight in knowing these things, um, <clears throat> we see that many people are going to be going to and fro, in and out. And uh, it, it, it's a blessing thing. Everybody's going to be coming to see Christ. Everybody wants to learn of Christ. Everyone's, boy, it's not like that today, is it? So that's going to be one major difference right there. Uh, one major difference as well. We're going to see that uh, uh, how the, what the worldly conditions are like. Turn over to chapter 11. I'm giving you, I'm trying to give you my abbreviated version. <clears throat> Look at verse number six. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Can we? Can that happen today? No. Oh no, man! There's going to be lamb chops. <laughs> um, and the leopard shall shall lie down with the kid. Is that going to happen today? No, who no, no. We go for a walk in the evenings. And we have these uh, great Pyrenees dogs that we feed dog biscuits down the road from my house. Now there's a little goat that comes up, a kid, you know, comes up and he has to get one of those biscuits too. Uh, but, but the calf and the young lion and the, and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them? Really? Can a child lead a leopard today and not get eaten up? <laughs> no. And, and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp and the wean child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den, and they shall not hurt nor destroy all my holy mountains. It's going to be a lot different, isn't it? And that we celebrate because we are going to be there. And, it's, and we're going to experience that. Um, and we're going to have our memories of this place, of beforehand. It's not wiped away and taken away from us. We're going to have all of that. We're going to be able to say, boy, I wish so-and-so was with us, right? Is there going to be tears in heaven? Come on now. That's right. They'll have to be wiped away by him, so there will be tears in heaven. But they'll have to be wiped away by Jesus. Yes. And during this 1,000-year reign that we're there, uh, ho you know, hold your spot in case I come back there to Isaiah. Go to, um, uh, I will come back to Isaiah. Go to chapter 20 of Revelation. <clears throat> chapter 20 of Revelation. We have a lot to celebrate. You know, when a Christian says, I can worship God anywhere, I don't have to go to church. Wow. Well, man, I, I got to tell you, let me tell you some of the things that you're missing out on. One is the knowing how you're going to be able to celebrate. 
And two, how much you could celebrate that you're not going to celebrate as much as I am or as much as the people here tonight are <clears throat> because you left a few things out while you had the opportunity. Look at verse 20, chapter 20. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and he bound him how many years? So isn't that when we're going to be here on the face of the earth during the millennial kingdom? It's the exact same time. There'll be no devil going to and fro up and down in the earth. There'll be no prince and power of the air. There'll be none of that. None of that. None of that. Boy, we get that to look forward to. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set, and, and set a seal upon him that he, should, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a season. But for that whole thousand years, people get to be pointed to Jesus. They get to see Jesus. They get to be taught about Jesus. They get to do all of those things. And then when the tempter's loosed again, we'll see, you know, you see what happens. I'm not getting down that road because that takes a while. Now go back to Isaiah chapter 2. And let's, let's look at 2 and 3 again. Chapter 2 and... Verse 2 and 3 again. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, shall be exalted above the hills, and all the nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So the... Everybody's going to be coming to meet Jesus, coming in and out. Man, you mean it's not going to be at all like today. Not going to be at all like today. But you know what? We just heard a testimony tonight because of the time release program. A child that doesn't go to church here, but we go out into the world and get them and bring them in and teach them about Jesus. Now their mom brings them to church this morning. So... So, so, and, and there's, a, there's a bus that drives these people, and there's a driver that drives the bus, and then there's people that help feed these kids, and every single one of them, every single aspect of that, there's a reward in store for you. There's a reward in store for you. Every single, that's something to celebrate tonight. Um, we, we look at, we look at, uh, uh, let me run you over to Revelation chapter 5. I'm bouncing you back and forth here. Verse 9 and 10. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and every tongue and every people and every nation. These are the four and twenty-four elders, right? And they fall down before his feet, and, they're, and they're out, thou art worthy to open the book, right? And the seals. What are those seven seals? When did those get opened up? During the tribulation hour, right? Yeah. And... And has made us unto our God, what? Kings. Yeah, kings and priests. And we shall reign where? On the, On the earth. So there again, we're seeing in the book of Revelation about this time uh, that we should celebrate today that we're going to be able to do such a thing. The, 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 we look at the, the physical aspects. The, those that make it through the tribulation hour, there's 144,000 that are sealed and beat up and scorched from the sun and undernourished and underwatered and, and just, oh. and, and people try to kill them, but they can't be killed. Didn't say they wouldn't be hurt, did it? Because you remember some of the plagues are whatever you, whatever you tried to do to them, they're going to do to you seven times over. Ouch. <laughs> um, so, so it's going to be tough. So there's going to be people in their physical bodies. They're going, to be, they're going to be pretty beat up, aren't they, at the end of that tribulation hour when we come back here with the Lord Jesus Christ on the face of this earth. They're going to be beat, beat, beat up. But check this out. Check this out. 
Go to uh, chapter 11 of, of, or 35, I'm sorry, of Isaiah. It's an eyeball problem, folks. I apologize. Chapter 35 in Isaiah. Look at verse number five. Then the eyes of the blind shall be what? And the ears of the deaf shall be. Then the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty, the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. I mean, it's just going to be, God's going to give them a healing. He's going to give them a healing that's going to give them such long life through the, through the millennial reign here on earth. A long healing. Um, Isaiah chapter 65. The scripture says in verse 20, there shall be no more thence an infant of what? Do you understand what that means? An infant of days. Um, when you have a baby, remember that ladies, when you, if you had a baby and uh, you were in the hospital that first day, what was that baby called? An infant, right? An infant. Um, an infant of days. Infants are only infants for days. They're not infants for years, right? I mean, how many people call a two-year-old an infant? How many people call a one-year-old an infant? No, it's usually for days. They're an infant of days. But look what the scripture says. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days, for the child shall die an hundred years old. In other words, at 100 years old, you're still considered a child. At 100 years old. That's pretty neat. That's hard for us to wrap our heads around. But we can celebrate about that tonight. So Luke, chapter number 19. And what we celebrate is the fact that we're here tonight and that we, most everybody here tonight is in service for the Lord in one way or another through this church. I look out through the church and most everybody I see has a service to the Lord here. <clears throat> Shared these passages of scriptures many a times with you, but it gives us a, an idea tonight. Then we look in Luke 19, verse number 12. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. This is the day and age we're in right now. This is what this parable he's speaking about is referring to, the day and age that we're in now. But his citizens hated him. And he sent a, and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was re returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto them, Well, well, thou, well good thou servant, good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over what? Yeah. Where's he, what's he talking about? Ten cities. Why do you say ten cities? Because he's, refer he's using a parable to refer to what we do here now when he comes back. What we do for him now is going to determine the authority we have in the millennial kingdom 
as we rule and reign with him. Amen? You get that? Okay. So, you, you know, the folks that aren't here, the folks that, are, that aren't the Christians that say they're Christians, but they don't think they have to be in God's house, they don't learn these things. And, and they're, you know, they're going to walk in, if they get there, uh, if they're truly saved, they're going to be saved, and it's going to be like, how come he got one of those? <laughs> how come he's going to be a king of a nation or a, a, a priest? How come he's going to be able to do those things? And I'm a shoeshine boy in the millennial kingdom. And it goes on and on and on. I'm not going to, for the sake of time, I'm not going to continue there. But you see what the, the Lord is saying. So when we look at Revelation chapter number 2 for us, And I like, to, I like to believe that most of us have already nailed all these blessings down as long as we continue to do them. As long as we continue to do them. Now, if we quit on God, that's a different story. If we quit, what happens? We don't lose our... But we lose our... Absolutely. Absolutely. So as we look at uh, Revelation chapter number 2... Verse number... Uh, let's look at verse number 24 in uh, chapter 2. But unto you I say, now, well, now, first of all, let me ask you, is Jesus talking to the church age before the rapture? Or is he talking post-rapture? That's right, he's talking to the church age before. Well, we're here and now, right now. So in verse 24, but unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which you have already, do what? How long? Till I'm tired? No. No. But you know what? There's folks, folks, there's folks that, that walk in and out of this church that I'll guarantee you they think that, well, for six months I did this for the Lord. And then I figured, let somebody else have another opportunity, so that was my occasion to quit. What did he say? Is that what he said to do? He says, yeah, hold fast till I come. In other words, don't give it up. Don't give it up. And he that overcometh and keepeth my what? How long? Until the end. To him will I give power over the nations. Yes. There's a particular class of people there that he's talking to. And that's the faithfuls that keeps his works until the end. He'll give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shrivers even as I received of my Father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto what? You've got to be there, don't you? You've got to be there. You know, that's a plural thing. That's not the church as in some universal broad definition. So we see that tonight, that we are truly, truly blessed. And, you know, I was talking to somebody this past week uh, out at the Haven, and, and I was sharing with them, uh, I was asked a question. What kind of ministries do you have in the church? I said, you got all day? <laughs> because seriously, there are so many, you know, I can't even think of them all. Okay, we have the people who clean for the Lord, right? We have the people who, who cut the grass, and do maintenance work for the Lord. And we have the people who teach for the Lord. We have the people that, that run the sound booth for the things of God. We have the people that, that serve as, as, as instrumentalists on the pianos and the dulcimer for the Lord and the guitar. And just as we saw the ladies and Brother Paul do today. We, we have, and you know, we, we can just keep, and we haven't even made it outside of the church building yet that I'm talking about. So now we get all the people that, 
that are, that are coming in and going out with the time release program every Tuesday and the summer release program in the summertime with the kids. Then we have the people that are going out to the nursing home ministries, of which there are several. And then we have a number of people that go with those nursing home ministries. Then we have the highways and hedges ministries to the homeless and the things that we're, we're doing with them. Then we have like the bikeathon coming up and all the work that goes into that, the people that are gonna cook, the people that are gonna do this. And it's all for one reason to use to get the gospel to the to the people of the world within our air, within our reach in our area and we haven't even gotten to our missionaries yet there's all the things that happens there with the with the missions workshops and and what we do there we've not even got to the blue line ministry or me being a she me shepherding the sheep dogs that's what i call it when i get around the officers they're the sheep dogs that protect the society and i shepherd the sheep dogs so, so there's, there's, we can just go on and on and on and on with those ministries. And yeah, we got a bunch of old people that love the Lord and love to serve the Lord and are guaranteed of rewards. Amen? Amen. Brother Adolf, you want to come? We'll get out of here. If somebody needs to come and pray tonight, you're welcome to do so. If you've not trusted Christ as your Savior, we invite you to come. We'll take the word of God and guide you to him.